Hey everyone, welcome back to the web automation series. In the previous video, we learned how we can upload our report folder on our CI CD pipeline using GitHub action. So today, what we will see, we will see how we can integrate it with Slack. So let's say if we want to get all the information, build information on a Slack channel. So we can, how we can do this with GitHub action. We will see all this part. So what do you have to do? Like this was our build pipeline. If you want to get all this information on your Slack channel, what is your what is the status of a build or what is the url of this build right where you can see all the reports all the artifacts and all the logs if you want all the detail it can be easily done what you have to do you have to just search for a github action just go to google.com and search for this github action which is rt camp forward slash action slack notify v2 i'll also add this in the description so you can easily copy it there are multiple github actions available online to use for Slack integration, but we are going with this one. So just click on the first link. If you click on the first link, it will take you to their official GitHub page. And you can see this is MIT license and it has 933 stars, right? We saw earlier also in our upload artifact, it was 2.6K stars. So the specific GitHub action, it actually tells you how many folks are there, how many stars are there for that and how many releases they have already done. So over here, we can see they have already done release nine releases and the 10th one is going on. And this is the kind of Slack notification which you will get. So you can see, so we can see over our GitHub action repo, whatever repo we want, the message and name of the user, title, everything. So they have provided multiple samples over here. Like this is one of the sample in which we are passing uh, Slack webhook URL. And they have also given some other samples. They have provided, they have provided some environment variables you can see the variable first is slack channel if you want to send it into a slack channel you need to provide the slack channel if you want to pass a username slack username which is a customized username you can pass it does not has to be a real username right message author so there are multiple environment variables we are not going to use every as part of a workflow so you can see all the environment variables let's see the part which we are going to use so this is the github action code which we are going to use as part of this what we are going to pass so as part of this we are passing multiple environments we have message we have title so they have shown over here step by step like this is our icon we can change the icon if you want to change so this is the color of your notification it depends on your build you see this is job dot status in case your job got filled it will be red this is the slack title we can see over here slack message you are passing the title from your slack message you can pass and other information so let's just copy this one as part of this there is one mandatory environment variable which you have to pass which you can see over here also there is there is one mandatory environment variable which we have to pass which is this slack webhook so what is slack webhook we'll create this one first let's just go to editor and copy the code and then i'll tell you how we can generate our slack webhook right so let's go to the editor execute for build.yml today this is our single test case and in this what we are going to use we are going to pass the same code let's go over here and let me pass some we pass some name over here so let me pass the name as i will pass it as slack notification and let's just paste the code which we have copied so they have already provided i'll remove the name and then just format it a bit fine so this is our github action uses means your main github action which we are going to use and rest of the things are there in the environment variables what we'll do we are not going to use everything i will remove slack channel i'll tell you why i'm removing the slack channel because whenever we generate our webhook url that will be specific to the channel only okay i can remove slack channel over here then is our slack color slack color is basically your job status if your job status is failed or uh, passed successful it will be based on that right you can pass some icon over you can pass some message so let me pass a message i want to change the message over here i want to pass test automation report right and i, I want to pass a link to my job run also what does that mean so in case over here in the in my reporting thing what i can see this is this my build run url right where you can see all your reporting folder attached and all your job information so i want the same thing added in, in our message right so let's go back to the editor and add this so apart from the test automation report i want to add some more customized message what we can paste the url which we copied this is our url right and in this url we can see the run id it is hard coded we can't pass the hard coded id because every time it will be a new run right so for this what we will do we will dynamically create it so for that we need to pass it like this so github dot 
run underscore id that means every time it will be new run id would be passed into your url and every time it will give you the new url for that run specific run okay fine so this is also done next is slack title you can pass any slack title over here. let's say you want to change it or you want to keep it seen you can pass anything let's say i want to pass it cypress web test and uh, slack username if you want to pass slack username you can pass otherwise you can remove it also let's remove it for now we don't need it and then comes the main part which is slack webhook what is this webhook slack webhook slack webhook is basically a url which is provided by slack which allows external services like github access to send messages to that specific slack channel because this webhooks are be to integrate and automate the interaction between different applications. So over here we are trying trying to automate the interaction between Slack and GitHub. So for that we need to pass a Slack webhook URL. How we can set up this Slack webhook URL? So what do you have to do? Just just go to Slack. Like this is a sample Slack uh, account which I have created for the demo purpose. If you have in your organization, you will be from Slack profile. And in that case, what you can do? First of all, you can create a channel. So I need to integrate Slack with GitHub. So for that, you need to have a channel also, right? So first of all, let's create a new channel. I will create a new channel for my automation reports. Name it as Cypress Web Test Report. Okay. So this is the name of your channel. This is how we have created a channel. I'm creating it as a public, but you can, in your organization, you can change it to private, right? You can change the setting. So now we have created a new channel. Let me click on cross. I don't want to add anyone as of now, right? So after creating a channel, just click on this channel name, click on the integration and over here, just go to the app because we are trying to create a Slack webhook URL, right? For that, what we need to do, just click on apps, add an app and over here, search for webhook. Fine. So we can see I've already created one webhook in the past. So that's why it's showing me the recent one for the view, but you can install it. Let's click on incoming webhook. You will see this install button after clicking on install it will take us to this page and on this page just click on add to slack fine and over here you can choose a channel like i had multiple channels over there you can choose whatever channel you want so i i've created new channel which is cypress web test report right let me maximize it yeah so you can choose the channel from here whatever channel you want so we chose this one and then click on add incoming webhook integration now this will generate a new webhook URL. So this is our webhook URL and you can see there are multiple ways to integrate it. We will be using webhook URL. So just copy this webhook URL. I'm just copying it, right? Go to our editor. So what we will do, we will not pass it directly over here. Due to security issues, you should not pass directly in your code. What you should do, you should create a secret token in your GitHub repo. So we will create a new secret token and then we'll use the same, same secret key in our code also like we, we are using over the secrets dot slack webhook so i'll create a new name which is slack webhook and i'll pass the value of slack webhook url over there let's go to github repo and create a new secret key so this is my github repo just go to some settings tab you will see secrets and variables just click on this actions and now we'll create a new secret key right just click on this new repository secret let's name it as slack webhook and pass the value of the webhook which we generated like this is the webhook url which we generated so let's add the secret and the slack webhook will use the same name in our code also let's go to the editor and you can see we already have the same name so this is the name of a secret key so this is very simple code i'll explain you once more first of all you have to pass the name of your step then we are using that github actions right and as part of the GitHub actions, we are passing few environment variables. One is the first is the color, which is we are passing dynamically, which is job dot status based on your job, based on your job status, it will be changed, right? Then we have the Slack icon. So the Slack icon, which is passed in the by default, it is provided by this GitHub action. You can change this also. Next one is Slack message. We are passing customized message. We are passing our report a build URL, right? You can see the url we have we are forming a new url every time based on our run id you have to pass like this github dot run id right and then think some customized title and then the webhook url fine and later on if you want to change it you can you can update it let's run it and let's see so now i'll push my code to my github repo so let me add it first so then i integration and then i push the code fine so now Meanwhile, it gets executed on the action tab. You can see all the execution status getting executed. 
the slack integration slack integration and for which test case we did we did for regression end to end test i'll show you over here this is our regression end to end test which is inside our build dot fml workflow you can see so if i click on this one let's see the logs if it is if there is any error or it is getting executed properly let's click on this and now our execution our checkout step is executed now our cypress run is getting executed you see all the steps are executed and our build is passed in the slack notification also if you want to see the logs just click on this and expand this you see color slack message webhook is anyway secret key that's why they are showing asterisk over it not showing the exact token exact url right now let's go to slack channel let's verify if we are getting the message or not this is our slack channel if you see you can see this is my username and in our main all the slack and this is the main branch where we pushed our code so the event over here you can see this is push because the event in our workflow file is push right this is the action you are this is the test report also let's click on this message we actually generated this dynamically you can see we didn't pass any run id specifically hard coded we dynamically created it and it's taking us to that page you see this is really amazing and total duration the execution steps right the logs and the report folder also you can see right if you want to download the report you can di directly download the report from here click on the cypress run you can see all the logs also so let's go once more to our slack channel this is the name change this icon also this is a png which we were using we can change this png if you want right it will be changed so we are getting some action url also now this was a case for a successful test execution let's say if you want to run for failure one so let's let's see the code for that as well in our code let's go to our code and explicitly we'll change one locator so that our build gets failed and we can see for failure scenario how it looks let's so this is my editor so this is a page object model which we were using and in the page class for home page we are going to change one locator let's say let's change the locator for this one why we are changing the locator first we want to See the failure case also how your slack message will look in case of failure notification so let's add the code and let's see the git add and the test failure and let's push the code okay now we have pushed the code let's go to github and let's see logs for this one so let's go to the action star our test file is basically a regression end-to-end -end test and so let's click on this and verify all the logs so we can see checkout is already done cypress is completed and this got failed and if i show you the other steps to so this was our cypress run step if we see other step cypress test report and slack notification got skipped why it got skipped because our first step is not succeeded in this case cypress run is failed so in order to handle this what we will do okay, i explained in my previous video also so in order to get the report or in order to proceed with the further steps you have to add the condition if always so if always what it will do if always will ensure these steps run even if the previous steps fails. So in case your Cypress run is failing due to some failure, so still you will get the report, still you will get the Slack notification. So what we'll do, let's go back to our editor and over here we'll write this condition, which is if always. So after the name, you can write like this. And same thing we need to provide in our reporting part as well. I wanted to show you without if always how it works. If you do not provide it, we're not getting the Slack notification. But in case if we run with this condition now, despite of the failure in this cypress run you will still get your report and the slack notification fine because it's very important you don't want to miss any notification in case of failure especially you need to have all the notification in your slack channel even if your test case is failing even if your build is failing so for that let's just push the code and let's see in this case how it is working so i'll just do git add quickly and then get conditional and git push Fine. Once we do the git push, then we will see even if our test case is failure, we will still see that report folder attached to the build pipeline and notification will be sent in our Slack channel. Let's go to the GitHub repo and let's see. Let me go to the action staff. And you see conditional test getting executed. So this is our test step. So this is our workflow file. Let me click on this. And inside this, if we go inside this one, Cypress run is still executing. So we can see it is getting executed and now our Slack notification step as well as our test report step both got executed. Earlier it was getting skipped, but now it is getting executed. And if we go to summary page, we will see a report package over here. So which is this one, you see mock awesome HTML report. So we saw this in the previous video also, case of failure, how we can get the report attached to your build pipeline.
Now the thing is, let's go to this last channel and see if we are getting notification or not. So now you see we are getting notification for failure test case as well. Now it is showing me red color. Now earlier it was in green. So this way you will see the status is failed. And if I click on this, it will take you to the, to the summary page. Okay. And there's one more link over there, which is actions URL. If I click on this action URL, it will take you to the step page. So you can see workflow logs over here. But the other URL which we added, that is to your summary page. You can see the summary over here. You can see the report and the main summary, how much time it took, what is the total duration, how many artifacts are there. Artifact means either your file or whatever is the attachment. We have single attachment over here. We can see which is this HTML report folder. So this is the case in our failure test case, how you will get the notification in Slack channel. You see in red color and in case of successful build, you will get in green color. So this is very important. Today we saw we can integrate Slack with the CI CD pipeline using GitHub Actions. And when you're working in a project, when you're working in a team, you need to know end to end. So only adding the test case will not be sufficient for you. You need to understand end to end. Like in the series, we saw how we can create a Git repository and how we can install Cypress, how we created page classes, how we found the locators, fixtures. So it's a driven approach. We saw everything in detail in the series. I would suggest you to watch the series because this is something which will be helpful for you when you are moving to a new company or when you are starting from a scratch in a, in a project, you have to start from the scratch for the Cypress framework. I'm sure it will be really helpful for you. Again, so we have covered all the components over here. So, uh, but I'll be providing some additional videos for the Docker because knowing Docker is also very important. So this is irrespective of the framework. Let's say you're working in Cypress or you're working in Selenium. So these are the components which you should be doing. So GitHub is common for all. You need to know some portion controlling. This is for an automation framework architecture. You need to know all the stuff. GitHub is important. Then installing that tool or whatever framework you're using, you need to do that like page object model or some different approach. Then you have to think about data driven approach, how you're going to use that. Another automation framework you're using Excel sheet or something else. So CSV, whatever you want to do. So you can use that and then some environment variables, how you're going to set that. The CI CD pipeline, which is very important and the integration with a Slack channel. So that's it for this video. And uh, in the next video, I'll come up some other topics like Jenkins and Docker. So I hope you're liking the content. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel.